Hi, I'm Kirsten, Kirsten Geffrich. Uh, I'm a professor at the Center for Molecular Biology of Heidelberg University, and I'm leading the Max Planck Research Group Biophysical Engineering of Life here at the Max Planck Institute. Um, so today I would like to show you what we actually do to build a cell from scratch from non-living components and make our own molecular hardware. So let's go. When you build something as complex as a cell, then you would have to ask yourself, how would you even start, right? So you could take a cell and you could smash it into pieces and then you could try and extract the most important ones for a given function. And in bottom-up synthetic biology, uh, these pieces that you take are oftentimes proteins. But the problem is proteins cannot actually make more of themselves. So if you're serious about building a self-replicating living entity, then you need the entire machinery to make the proteins as well. And this is complex. And because it is so complex, I have the feeling that we have the freedom to be creative and to kind of start to think of our, our own tools, our own materials to build up something which has the same functionality. And in my team, what we are trying to do is to take molecules with, which have the inherent capacity to make more of themselves, namely DNA and RNA, and build our own molecular hardware from DNA nanotechnology or from RNA nanotechnology. So what do we do? DNA and RNA origami is about folding DNA, so not about genetics, it's purely about architecture. It's about making functional components from scratch that operate on the inside of a synthetic cell. So far we've been building components like mimics of cytoskeletons or of pores, mainly from DNA origami. However, this requires chemical functionalization and this is why we believe that RNA origami, where we can incorporate function more easily, is actually uh, our way forward in the future. It's extremely exciting to be doing research in a time where the first synthetic cell is truly built from scratch may become a reality. But at the same time, the journey towards it also really proves to be worthwhile because we see technologies in the most unexpected areas. So to give you an example from my own uh, group, when we were working on synthetic cell division, we realized that we can use our dividing lipid vesicles as osmolarity sensors. So you see how even though we are working on curiosity-driven research, the applications just come about in the most unexpected areas, and I think that's really fascinating.